The brain, an intricate network of billions of nerve cells. It tells our lungs to breathe, our hearts to beat, and allows us to balance, all without consciously thinking about it. There are something like 100 billion cells. All of that runs on about 20 watts, which is equivalent to a very, very dim light bulb. Damage the brain, and it will severely impair your ability to function. But brain damage also allows scientists to work out exactly which part does what in the normal brain. The amazing thing about the human brain is for a long time people didn't think it was that important. The Greek philosopher Aristotle claimed that it was simply there to cool the blood and that real intelligence resides in the heart. Down the centuries, the only time physicians got to see the brain was when the person was dead. Working out what part did what was an almost impossible puzzle. By the mid-19th century, most doctors did agree that the brain was important, but many were now in the grips of a new pseudoscience, phrenology. Phrenology heads like this one were a real attempt to label and understand the various parts of the brain. But unfortunately, most of what they labelled was completely wrong. It wasn't until the late 19th century that a French doctor finally put neurology on a scientific footing. So, Joe, when I've handled a human brain, it's grey, it's gelatinous, and it's almost impossible to imagine how anyone ever worked out what the bits do. I mean, how did they start? It really started with um, Pierre-Paul Broca, who was a neurologist back in, in France. He was the first person to realise that there were these patients who had really profound deficits. He saw a patient named uh, Tain, because this was a gentleman who had lost his ability to produce speech, and all he could really say was Tain. And he died very shortly after uh, Broca saw him. So Broca performed an autopsy and looked at the brain. What Broca found was that this area of the brain on the left had a very large lesion in it, a big hole. Mm -hmm. And he made the conclusion that this part of the brain was very important for the ability to produce speech. Broca was the very first person to recognize that different parts of the brain had different functions. And he saw this from, from his patient, Tan. This was a hugely important step. Broca's discovery was the first landmark, and soon the map grew. These days, computer science allows researchers to peer into the brain while the person is still alive. Today, Dr. Devlin is going to play patient to enable me to actually hear the speech area of the brain being interfered with. Dr. Devlin's brain will be subject to a magnetic pulse that will temporarily interfere with his brain's neurons. Okay. 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 35, 44, 43. Cool, that was spooky. That was very, very spooky. You okay to do it again? Absolutely, you ready? Okay, you feel normal? I feel fine. It's just, uh, it just makes it very difficult to produce speech while you're doing it, that's all. Okay, start counting again then. Okay, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45. That is so weird, this is so weird. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to be interfering your brain anymore. Thank you. That was very... The brain has billions of neurons, and that short pulse of electricity touched only on a minuscule area. Many parts of the brain are still under investigation today. Tell me what you find remarkable about the brain. It's so much more complicated than the, even the most sophisticated computers that we have. I mean, if you think about the kind of things that NASA uses or, I don't know, the FBI, the brain is thousands, maybe millions of times more complicated than the most amazing things we've ever produced. I'm sure that Broca would have been astonished by how much we have learned about the human brain since his day, but also by how much there still is to learn.